What's up guys, it's The Hunter Fisher. Welcome back to another epi banger video. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a tutorial video. So I've been doing BFS for a while now and I would like to say that I have a good grasp on how to cast well. Like for example, I'm out here casting Rapala floaters, finer underneath tree branches like it's nobody's business. 1 16th ounce beetle spins, 1 8th ounce beetle spins, even 1 32nd ounce I can cast pretty accurately. Today's video is gonna be on how you guys can get better at casting your BFS. So necessarily to say that is how do I cast lighter lures better on a BFS reel? So what a BFS reel is, if you guys don't know already, let me put y'all down right here. BFS reel is essentially a reel with an extra small spool or extra shallow spool that allows you to cast lighter lures better. So what's more particular about a BFS spool is it's also lighter. So say for example, for BFS spools, typically most people are actually using more nylon lines. What I'm using here is a PE line, so it might be a little bit different, so you need to change it a little bit accordingly. There's a bunch of baitcaster tutorials that are pretty basic on how you do it. A lot of people do when they're setting up their first baitcaster for the first time is they do the lure drop method. So lure drop method, you tighten down your spool tension until it just falls down at a slow rate. That's not what you're gonna do with BFS. So BFS today, really what it's all about is making sure your spool tension is set correctly. So I can have my lure fall as fast as I want. Say for example, let me start over like this. Let me just crank that drag back up. So what the whole point of the spool thing is, is making sure, hear that? You can kind of hear it on the mic, I think. If your spool wobbles side to side, you don't want that to happen with BFS stuff. So with BFS stuff, what you want to be essentially with your spool tension is tighten down your spool tension until it gets to the point where it does not do any side to side wobble. This goes for anybody. It doesn't matter how much skill you may have, tighten it down and just leave it there. But you want it tight enough to where it's just not wiggling anymore. Some people can tighten it to where it's just barely wiggling still. I do sometimes, I know that for sure. But I got this set to right about where I want it right now is, okay, that's still not enough tightness. <laughs> so it's just now tight enough. A recommendation is, is to set it, your brakes to 80. So granted, I am using a Daiwa Alpha Air, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to cast. I will say that much. But if you set your brakes to 80 and start working down from there, if your lures keep landing left, that means your brakes are too high. You're gonna crank that boy down. By the way, guys, these rules can go for anybody. It's if you're using a light bait caster, an ultra light bait caster, or just in general bait caster. Is I actually have started doing this for all my bait casting reels now because I think it's better overall that when you set it up according to factory standards. Most bait cast casters when they send you it like from Japan or something they tell you to set your bait casters like this on a Corrado DC this is how you're supposed to set your bait cast so like I said spool tension to where the spool doesn't wobble brakes you can set to 80 I have mine a half right now because it's a little bit easier for me to cast but remember guys you need to have that thumb on the spool if you need to just cast lightly do not flick your wrist now for the rest of the video I'm gonna get out on the water I think and show you guys how to cast which by the way guys with BFS it's not just a cast like that you can you can have pitching and flipping, which requires less breaks. You also have a under backhand, I think is what it's called. By the way, guys, a lot of my tips and stuff like that come from a YouTuber named Hobiwan Kenobi. I'm actually gonna leave his channel at the top of my description because I'm new to the BFS game. I am not Hobiwan Kenobi. I am not water fishing. I am not anybody who really you should be listening to necessarily. Go listen to those guys. They'll tell you a lot more than I can. But I'm gonna leave Hobiwan Kenobi's link right at the top of the description because he deserves it. He's a very smart dude. One of the He does a lot of this for trout fishing but watch this, so with the under backhand, it's like this. So like that, when you have your brakes set a little bit lighter, you can do that. So the same thing, if you're not cranking it and flicking it as hard as you can, have your brakes set a little bit lower. It helps you out a lot more in the long run. The lure that I'm using is the Euro Tackle little Z-Viber. So this is not their micro size. This is like a step above their micro size, but this is not one of their regular sizes. This is like more so meant for like your ice fishing applications, your jigging applications. This is actually a lure that is meant to be snag less. It's snag, not, not, it's not snagless, but snag less. <laughs> you know what I mean? It snags less. So what it has is an inline hook that's perfect for coming through weeds a lot better. I'm actually been fishing pretty much in the most weediest pond here down in Florida. Fishing with this and to be honest, I haven't had any issues as far as uh, getting snag goes. Just because I use braid. Florida, you can't get away with not using braid. A lot of people like to use mono and copolymer and stuff like that. A lot of your better BFI, BFS guys who also do YouTube videos, RAR and Hobie One, they use typically fluorocarbon or monofilament. Personally, I just prefer braid because in the future I'm gonna be doing some saltwater fishing with this set setup today. Let me get a little bit more in depth about the exact setup I'm using before I get into the casting tips. So the casting tips, as far as uh, everything goes, right now I'm using a 2020 Daiwa Alphys Air TW, which means it's a T-wing system. And the air system is essentially a, a gradual braking system that slows the more you need it. It's like a DC, but not a DC. In a 
sense. It's hard to explain, but this is a BFS reel. It has, I think, like a seven point something gram spool. I don't know the measurements off the top of my head. Like I said, I'm not the most expert guy on BFS fishing. I just know how to cast. <laughs> so, and the rod that I'm using today is the Ace Hawk Double CU, which comes with two separate tips, an ultralight and a light tip. One's rated for 0.5 to 4 grams, another is rated for 2 to 6 grams. And the lure that I'm using today is a 3.5 gram, 1 16th ounce lure. So, kind of a little bit upper end with this rod, so I'm gonna be casting a lot better with this lighter tip. But probably if I switch to the other rod tip, I'd probably be casting even better. But this rod is awesome for the price. And if you guys do search up the prices on each of these, this is an expensive reel to have on this rod. This rod is only $38. But if you guys are looking for a good budget option as far as BFS rods go, Ace Hawk for sure. I always recommend it to everybody. Got to wait a little bit for it from AliExpress, but it is 100% worth it. In the future, I do want to get something like the Aries or the Dexterity, but not right now. So that is enough for talking about setup and everything today, guys. I think what I want to do next is go actually fish. So I'm going to go on the GoPro, show you guys some tips for how I set up my bait caster. I'm going to go over through everything again on the GoPro, but I wanted to make sure I talk about this right at the beginning, how I set it up and everything. But that is all guys. Let's get out on the water. Let's show you guys what it looks like in the GoPro. All right guys, we are currently on our last GoPro battery. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys what I'm using today. That is the EuroTackle Z-Viber, 1 16th ounce, otherwise known as three and a half grams. I think it's three and a half grams. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. But we are using the ASOC. Like I said before guys, when you're setting up your BFS bait caster, you wanna have it set to where that spool does not wobble. Mine's wobbling just slightly ever so slightly. It's slide to side, so I'm gonna crank it up, tighten for right hand, loosen for right hand. It's the other way around on the left hand. I'm using a right hand bait caster because I use right hand. If you're a BFS guy, typically you're gonna use left hand just because it's more normal to you, but that doesn't mean anything necessarily if you're using the wrong one, one or the other, whatever it may be, you know, doesn't matter. And I'm setting my brakes a little bit lower than normal. I'm setting them to 10 right now, and we're gonna take our first cast and see if that's right about where we want it to be. So I'm gonna show you guys there so that's a little bit too much brakes right there because I landed off to the left right there but essentially how I casted was slowly when you take your first cast with a bait caster like this you're gonna take it slow because you're most likely going to backlash your first time probably gonna backlash a lot <laughs> when you get more into it but now that I cast it to the left I'm gonna crank it down just by two because I think that's right about where I want it because I'm almost there Still to the left, so it looks like I still need to go down even more, but I'm casting further, so we're getting there. So like I said, you're not gonna be like whipping it as hard as you can until you get a more better grasp of how to cast the bait casters first. Cause like, I've been casting bait casters for years and this was a challenge for me. This was 100% harder than any other bait caster I've ever used, just because it's more set for finesse tactics. So it's gonna be a lot harder to cast. It's more of an expert sniper type fishing, I will say that for sure. So like I said, guys, slowly. Still landing to the left, but I think that's because I'm casting so slow, but I'm gonna crank it down one anyways. So now we're on five for breaking right now. We're on five with a 1 16th ounce lure, barely any breaks. But we're gonna reel that in. Granted guys, also remember, don't take exactly all my measurements to be what you need to put on like say a budget bait caster because I guarantee you a Zephyr is not going to be casting with brakes as well as the Daiwa Alphys Air and if you have any idea of this quality difference you're still going to see that although there's a bass right there <laughs> so now we're down to five I'm going to crank it side so I put ever so slightly effort into the actual cast and we land it straight out in the middle so what you can do guys is you can actually whip it once you get that better grasp of how to thumb this oh dang it that's not good so like i said guys you can whip it it's just you have to have a better grasp on how you thumb the spool for example i'm going to show you guys me whipping it see i just barely stopped it but i got it even further out there and i probably could even adjust my brakes to go down by one if i wanted to so i'm going to do that we are now at four for brakes and get this back in so now i've showed you guys how to cast that light of a lure a 16th ounce by the way guys so like say for example i could cast a rapala floater just as far as i'm casting right now and have the same amount of luck so we're going to cast one more time just just to prove a point i guess oh there we go that was my first backlash so remember guys you don't want to pull if you're using braid be careful not to pull too hard on these guys because it will bend a bfs spool easier 
than normal monofilament or something like that because braid is usually stronger than the spool itself and what the spool can handle but I wouldn't be too particular about that. Just remember, don't pull your braid. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tie on a different lure to show you guys because I also wanna fish this lure today just because why not? But I've been out here fishing for a little bit already and no bites. So what we're gonna do today is get this lure off and put on a new one. I will see you guys then. All right guys, so we got the Z-Pop tied on. So with these guys, your brakes might have to change ever so slightly. So I'm gonna cast real quick. We're gonna need more, probably more brakes than that now. So we're gonna pop the brakes up by two. Pop, get it. And then I'm gonna work this in. I have a feeling that the bass are a little bit deeper today, so I cast this straight out there. So with this type of lure, you're probably gonna catch more bass than bluegill. You might catch a couple panfish, but I have not yet caught a panfish on the Z-Pop, but I enjoy fishing with the Z-Pop a lot just because top water is so much fun. All right, guys, got that in. So, like I said, probably need to adjust the brakes even more than that. Now I'm up to eight. I'm just working this in, casting normally. Like I said, this is a heavier lure, which I probably shouldn't be throwing this lure on this light of a tip, but that's okay, because I don't really care about switching it right now. I would like to see a lighter popper come in the future, just because I think that this popper is great. It's just lighter would be cooler because you never know maybe you want to catch a little bit smaller fish i know i do sometimes i like enjoying i actually enjoy catching small fish so i'm weird like that i also like enjoying catching big fish i just enjoy fishing it overall <laughs> oh we got a mess to untangle so the disadvantage of braid with treble hooks right here guys if you guys do not want this to happen do not use braid with treble hooks but to be honest, I make this sacrifice because I don't like losing lures and I don't like losing fish. I have lost fish even on braid. I've lost less fish on braid. That's the matter of the fact. I'm literally stuck inside the split ring because of how small the diameter of my braid is. I'm gonna try to see if I can get a little flip over there, guys, to show you guys an underhand cast. Right there, that's an underhand cast right there. It's a little bit more accurate casting. I wanted to go a little bit further than that, but that's okay. All right, guys, uh, it is hot as heck out here. Oh my gosh, we just got done fishing. I just lost that freaking Z popper. I just got, dude. There is no worse feeling than just getting a lure and losing it immediately. It was a good lure to lose, I guess. I was trying to actually get some trash out of the water and that's why I lost it. I'll probably include it on camera how I lost it, but it's okay to be honest. I really don't care as long as, uh, to be honest, I was trying to do something good and I kind of just got smacked in the face. So my own fault, I'll pay for it, whatever. That's all for today, guys. If you guys enjoyed a little bit of a tutorial, make sure you guys are liking the video. Make sure you guys, if you haven't already subscribed, it always helps me out to have extra people that are subscribed and everything. Get wrapped up today. And uh, we're gonna say adios to fishing today because it is hot as heck aroni and uh, I'm tired. But I can't wait to get out there and do some real fishing, some different type of fishing, something like that. I wanna do is chase after some crappie soon, do a lake, do like a lake breakdown, how to find deep summer fish, whatever it may be. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it after that. I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed the iCast series. I know I did. And uh, we'll probably do some more unboxings starting now because y'all killed the last unboxing video, which is kind of awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't expect y'all to kill the unboxing video like y'all did. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys learned something, let me know down below. If you have any questions, please, I'll answer them in the comments the best I can. If not, I'll lead you guys to some videos that can help you out. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, fish fear me.